Welcome to the Poison Culture Podcast, where we dive into the dark and intriguing aspects of history, folklore, and human curiosity. I'm your host, Cody Gregory, and I invite you to join me on this journey as we explore the mysteries, traditions, and cultural significance of the summer solstice. So grab your favorite beverage, find a cozy spot, and join my guest Kira Gregory and I on this summer solstice. All right. Thanks for uh, coming back to the show, Kira. Hi. You are my resident house witch. <laughs> yes. So yes, when I, I have uh, witchy questions to ask you, I always come to you. I do my best. So today's episode, we're going to be talking about the um, summer solstice. Mm-hmm. So I'll just let you know, like, so from my understanding, um, the summer solstice occurs when the sun reaches its highest point in the northern hemisphere. Mm-hmm. This creates the longest and almost sunniest day of the year. And the shortest night. Yes. Um, as a history buff, um, the summer solstice has been seen as a significant time of the year in many cultures, and it's been marked by festivals, rituals, traditions, and especially in Europe. Mm-hmm. Uh, the summer solstice is seen in the middle of summer and referred to as midsummer, although today in some countries and calendars it's seen as the beginning of summer. It is, yeah. So summer solstice, what does that mean to um, a witch? Um, it means to me, it means rebirth, fire. You are, you're worshiping the light. You're worshiping writing what you want to release. And it's kind of like, it can be a restart button. If you feel like, you know, midway through the year that you want to pivot or change direction, it is a beautiful time to do that because you can just start fresh. For sure. Absolutely. I know summer has always been a special time for me, um, I think every kid has always loved summer because it's school's out. You have your summer break. Mm -hmm. Um, For me, my birthday's in July. (laughs) So summer's always been a special time for me. Mm -hmm. Um, Recently, we've been doing a lot of camping. um, And I always like to journal when I'm out camping. I like to just be out in nature and just write. And I guess that is a form of refreshing Mm -hmm. doing the summer thing, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Fire cleansing. It's something that's actually pretty commonly done um, in this world, I guess you could say. Um, So when I write down things, it can be anything from just what I did that day to poetry um, to even intentions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like journaling. Um, Writing down like kind of like your intentions for the next half of the year. Um, lots of celebrations and sabbats happen in this last half of the year, and the summer solstice is kind of like the middle ground. So it's like the per- perfect time to be really putting down what you want to do, what you hope to do, kind of goal setting, or even releasing stuff. Right, right. And uh, I guess for you, because you're also a candle maker, Mm. the uh, summer solstice also has a lot of things to do with um, fire cleansing. Yeah, yeah. So with releasing, um, fire cleansing is a form of, is actually like quite commonly done. And you usually on like full moons when you, you want to take whatever is bothering you, growing inside of you, or just ego is speaking super duper loud. You want to write it down and then you actually, you fold it away from you and you throw it in the fire. Right. And it's the perfect time to do it at the summer solstice when the sun is high um, and it's high in the sky for a very long time. So we normally have campfires um, on summer solstice and it's, it's very therapeutic to be able to just kind of like do a brain dump. Everything is just kind of sitting like the sediment Mm -hmm. sitting heavy in like your heart and your soul and your, your chakras to write it down and yeah, do the act of folding it away from you. Um, cause you want it to leave you and throwing it in the fire and letting the ashes just kind of go up into the sun and it dissolves as night comes. Right. For sure. And I know in history, especially Europe, I think dating back Oh, I think probably the 1400s or mm-hmm. somewhere around there. Uh, on the summer solstice, they actually have bonfires. Oh, yeah. 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 Throughout all history, throughout Europe, there are bonfires on the summer solstice. Mm-hmm. Um, it starts kind of like building up, like building up that fire um, for Beltane in, in May. It's the, the big Beltane fires, and then that's the month of May, and then it peaks at the summer solstice. Right. Very cool. And another tradition people have that I've read is uh, sun meditation. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
Um, sun meditation is really, really good for kind of charging your, your middle chakras. You do like the solar plexus. That's kind of like solstice is, it's all yellow, yellows and oranges, primarily the yellows. So you do everything for your solar plexus, which is like self-confidence. And that can be in the form of like quieting your mind so that you are able to have that confidence. And sun meditation is a beautiful way to doing that as opposed to when you're gearing down at night and you do your meditation um, like that, you actually do it in the rays of the sun and it's recharging you as you are uh, quieting and stilling your mind. Cool. And summer is always a great time to do a bunch of uh, gardening. Mm -hmm, My favorite. (laughs) We've been doing a lot and it's a great way to actually bring that outside inside. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if anybody's ever, who's listening has been inside our home, you know that I am quite the collector of plants. <laughs> um, bringing nature inside the house, I think is a beautiful way of just creating a very neutral space. So they, they cleanse the air. And I do believe that they do cleanse more than just that for like ourselves and our minds. Um, with in particular summer solstice, the act of bringing nature inside is kind of, um, you're cleansing your home. Right. It's an aesthetic that, uh, having greenery around, Mm -hmm. it it looks good. Um, makes you feel better. Definitely. I don't think people realize that if you have houseplants in your house, you're doing magic. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Another great thing about summer is just, um, being grounded. Uh, Mm -hmm. getting out in nature, walking, getting your bare feet on sand, dirt, and connecting with earth. Touch grass. (laughs) Yeah. Grounding is like my absolute favorite thing to do. Um, Even when like, it's not summer solstice, but grounding yourself, going out in bare feet is something that I think it should be a requirement of everybody's morning kind of habits. It starts your day off on the right foot. I do believe that's where that saying actually comes from. Right. Um, And it just gives you such a positive mindset because did you know, it's actually scientifically proven that the smell and the microbes that come off of dirt is a form of an antidepressant. Oh, really? Yeah. So getting outside and literally touching grass is an antidepressant. It's good for you. It is. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. I saw this YouTube. It was a guy who built a uh, chair out of metal Mm. and he put metal spikes into the ground connected to the chair. So it was his grounding chair and he would spend an hour or two out there and sitting, reading a book or whatever. And, uh, he swore by it. Like he said, his, his ailments, like his, uh, arthritis and all that were starting to go away because he was getting grounded every day. That's so cool. Cause if you think about it, if it was made of metal, that metal, it came from the earth. So he made like a direct like phone line yeah from the earth right into his body that's that's incredible it was a compelling video and it made me wonder it's like oh, i should try that totally we should make a grounding chair yeah i think it would go well out in the front lawn yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know you have an altar in the house mm-hmm. all season long but you switch it up every now and again are you going to do anything for summer solstice yeah i kind of like to i normally go just kind of like by my gut when I feel like it needs a reorganizing, but I do love to pair it with the points of the year and summer solstice being it's just summery and, and it kind of just puts a vibe into your house. Um, so I'll, I'll normally do like all the yellows, like we were talking about, um, mm-hmm. everything from like summer flowers, dandelions, sunflowers, um, herbs can be, like dill is a really good one for summer fruits. You're thinking stone fruits. So right. like peaches, apricots, bright, bright tastes like that. And yeah, I just kind of set it up and I give just that area of our house a vibe. It's perfect. And I love it around Christmas time around here because you always do a great simmer pot. Oh yes. I'm obsessed. You do like cinnamon, cranberries, oranges, raspberries, and it just makes the house smell so good. Oh, yeah. No, I always, I love doing like seasonal simmer pots. I think it's, well, it's, it's an organic scent. So you're not putting anything crazy into the air. Um, what are you going to do for summer solstice? Summer solstice, I normally like to do citrus. Winter is like a spice and berry and summer is all about like the fresh, 
So I do limes, um, ginger, oranges, lemons, rosemary, and peppermint. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it puts a beautiful scent into the air and I love doing it. I'll, I'll use normally like new moon water and I'll put all those in and you just, you bring it to a simmer and you just let it slowly bubble away and you can keep adding water and it makes the house, I swear it gets into the bones of the house and Mm -hmm. it stays for weeks. It's It's my favorite thing. My favorite day of the year when you have a simmer pot going mm-hmm. on because you can mm-hmm. smell it coming inside the door and it's oh, just, yeah. it makes you feel at home. Mm-hmm. That's great. So I think equal to the amount of plants that we have in this house <laughs> is the amount of crystals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do they play any part in summer solstice? Oh, they play so many parts. <laughs> um, it's known that you generally cleanse your crystals in the moonlight. Right. Um, However, this one day is kind of the exception to the rule. Um, It's like the one time during the year to cleanse your crystals in pure sunlight. It takes away kind of like the buildup of negative energy that's been kind of like worked into the crevices and it's kind of like... Yeah, it's, it's gotten right in there. And then you can sleep with the crystals near your bed mm-hmm. um, after doing that at night. Okay. So it's really cool. You can put out your favorites. I I love generally everything anything yellow for the solstice. So citrine, but I'm a sucker for calcite, yellow calcite and uh, honey calcite. Oh, yeah. Super juicy. Um, put those out in the sun. Let it soak it all up. Get the sun's energy and get all the gunk out and yeah, sleep with them at night, put them underneath your pillow or under your mattress, wherever. Cool. Uh, Beyond going outside and in nature, there is so many more uh, Mm -hmm. paths to honoring the summer solstice Mm -hmm. being like yoga or meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually I love to kind of mesh those two and blend it with bath ritual. It's my absolute favorite. Right. Um, You can, you can do guided nidras meditations okay. in the bath and bath rituals are, they're one of my favorite ways to kind of be present in whatever part of the year it is. Um, as you know, I sell bath teas and it's one of my favorites to use for the summer solstice is Pasatea. Um, okay. She was the wife of Hypnos, the god of sleep. So she's oh. known for relaxation. Um, I put, there's rose petals and lavender and chamomile and, um, two kinds of soaking salts in it. And it's a perfect way to kind of tie in your meditation. Um, again, I love doing yoga nidras in there. It's the perfect place. And yeah, you're kind of doing two birds, one stone. That's very cool. Yeah. Well, perfect. That's just a nice, short and sweet little podcast about the um, summer solstice. Uh, Thank you to my house witch, Kira, for coming on the show again. (laughs) You're welcome. And uh, if you guys uh, want to know more about Kira and all that, you can go to www.thehearthcraft.com. She's also on Instagram at The Hearthcraft. And uh, check her out on TikTok, too. You can find the Poison Culture Podcast on Instagram and YouTube at Poison Culture Podcast. Until next time, stay spooky.